Hello and welcome to this brief video on covering the difference between team charter, ground rules and working agreements. I'm sure if you are preparing for the PMI ACP exam, you may have came across these terms. On surface, these terms looks pretty similar or identical. For example, it's very hard to sort of look at the surface and say that what is the difference between team charter, ground rules and working agreements. And this could be confusing. So a few days ago, one of the PMI ACP aspirant who is enrolled in my Udemy uh, PMI ACP practice test exam course has recently uh, asked me about exact details uh, between these three terms. Um, so uh, when I think about it, uh, I also felt that these terms may look very similar or very close to each other but there are few subtle differences that you probably need to know for your PMI ACP exam. So in this brief um, video session I am going to uh, go over some of those key differences which hopefully will uh, explain or you know identify the differences between these uh, these three terms uh, and yeah let's go one by one. So I prepared this uh, slide just to cover those differences and uh, we will go over each uh, term in more detail as we walk through these differences. Starting first with the team charter. Of course, team charter is different from the project charter, right? Uh, team charter is more like a formal document and a social contract. Who creates this team charter? Generally speaking, it should be drafted by the team because it is a charter for the team. So it's a formal document. That's that's probably the you know key takeaway there. And um, it's it, again, as I mentioned, like it should be drafted by the team for the team, right? What does it contain? It usually contain uh, uh, things like the the purpose and the goal and the roles and the responsibilities of the team members. Uh, within the within the team so it just outlines all those things uh, at a very high level uh, in some team charters i have also seen um, they have mentioned about some of the important milestones that the project has to uh, meet uh, even the budget information was also mentioned in some of the team charters but the specifics may vary from team to team and uh, the need of that particular project and that team uh, but the idea here is uh, the team charter serves as a formal document like a social contract and um, yeah it should be drafted by the whole members of the team uh, there are few additional things that may be uh, mentioned in this team charter such as uh, you know some of the uh, decision making processes and how the conflicts might be uh, resolved but again as i said there there could be variations in the specifics of the team charter but it should act like a formal document and a social contract uh, as far as the teams are concerned so that's that's the first point that's about the team charter ground rules are like we can say these are simple guidelines which the team is expected to follow and i mentioned the example of a team meeting here right for example there could be a ground rule drafted by a team in which the team agrees to the fact that only one person can speak at a time during a meeting now this meeting could be a daily stand up or it could be a sprint planning meeting it could be a sprint retrospective meeting or any other technical meeting that the team may need to conduct in order to complete the project work but the idea here is the team members will be drafting these ground rules and during the project execution these ground rules are expected to be followed by the team members generally speaking these ground rules are drafted at the beginning of the project when the team formation is is happening and once the team formation is done set these ground rules establish these you know expected behaviors so that during the project execution the team can follow follow these uh, uh, these ground rules uh, there are few more examples that can be that can be quoted uh, i mentioned about the meeting etiquette right uh, which basically talks about uh, guidelines related to how team members 
should behave during the meeting uh, uh, i mentioned about one person speaking at a time but there could be few additional uh, ground rules here such as uh, being punctual uh, being on time for each and every meeting uh, every team member should be actively participating asking questions and uh, you know showing the respect to uh, opinions expressed by the other people so these could be handful ground rules that can be drafted uh, by the team uh, for for their meeting etiquettes uh, it could be related to uh, these ground rules can also be formed for the communication channels for example in some organizations uh, they may use both slack and google chat as the communication tools right uh, however this team may uh, decide to use only slack for for all the communication right uh, because otherwise the team may have to uh, like monitor both slack and the google chat and this may or may not be productive for the team so instead of looking at these two different communication tools the team can set a ground rule saying hey we will just use slack for all the project communication right so this could be another uh, another example for for the ground rules so the idea here is these uh, ground rules that we are talking about should be uh, again uh, set by the team members but one point is these ground rules are not set in stone of course the these can be adjusted or updated as needed throughout the project the purpose of course of these ground rules is to facilitate a positive team environment and improve the collaboration um, and active participation uh, allowing the agile team members to interact and focus on delivering value to the to the customer and the client efficiently right that's the main purpose of these ground rules so it's not like once they are uh, set up those these cannot be changed it's not like that agile always you know focuses and uh, uh, emphasizes a lot on embracing the change and ground rules can hence also be you know supposed to be changed if they are not serving the pr purpose of uh, uh, you know delivering the value through through agile uh, establishing and adhering to the ground rules can significantly contribute to the success of the agile team because by fostering a sense of ownership uh, trust and mutual respect uh, among the team members uh, these these ground rules can help the team members to become more productive and they know what to expect from from each other right they also promote a culture of continuous improvement because as i said right these these uh, ground rules can be changed uh, in future depending on the team's need lastly the working agreements uh, again uh, i would say quite similar to the to the ground rules in a sense that uh, they they too are formed by the team for the team these working agreements uh, but here the intention of having these work agreements is on improving teams efficiency right uh, so for example let's say team wanted to uh, held multiple meetings uh, but um, for the let's let's take an example of a software development project right during the first half of the day uh, instead of uh, spending that those productive hours in in team meetings the team may decide to uh, do all the meetings maybe only with the exception of say daily stand up in the second half so here is what we are saying we as a team we will do all our meetings in the second half of the day say after 3 pm uh, in the afternoon and the the first half uh, first half of the day the team will spend time on you know writing the code testing the code or if there is any other project work they will they will focus more on on doing the technical side of things and making the deliverables ready this is an example of working agreement the another example which i mentioned in the in the slide is about uh, you know uh, certain expectations for example uh, if the team is working in a scrum environment uh, and at the end of the sprint the team may send this sprint report say two days after the sprint ends okay so this clearly outlines the expectations to all the stakeholders that 
only after two days when the sprint ends the sprint report will be generated this this sets the right expectations with the with the stakeholders and uh, in a way uh, you know help the team become more productive because here the team members will know that they don't have to spend the time immediately after the sprint and on generating these sprint reports instead they can continue with the other activities and only after two days they can you know they can work on the sprint report uh, thing there is a you know subtle difference uh, that the working agreements are little different from the ground rules generally speaking ground rules as i mentioned are established at the beginning of the project uh, or generally during the team formation time these working agreements are specific to the team's ongoing work right so these are generally formed during the during the execution or ongoing work of the of the project and of course they also evolve as the team learns and adapts throughout the project right so for example this uh, uh, the example that we discussed about uh, having uh, um, all the meetings team meetings only in the second half could change if there are some team members who join from another different time zone and joining in the second half will be very difficult for them right in such cases of course the team can decide to uh, do some meetings uh, in the in the first half so just similar to the ground rules uh, the working agreements can also uh, be adjusted or changed a uh, few more examples of working agreement could be like uh, for example uh, everyone should attend and participate in a daily stand up right it should be it should be followed uh, by the by the all the team members this could in, this should include all the important stakeholders like all the team members the product owner the scrum master and so on and so forth uh, next let's say uh, if the impediments are raised during the daily stand up then uh, those imp impediments should be addressed on priority by the by the team member so it could be a scrum master who will make a note of it and then uh, will go ahead and try to resolve these uh, impediments which the team is facing so that could be a working agreement example as well so yeah these are some of the uh, important differences uh, i hope this makes uh, the differences between the team charter the ground rules and working agreements clear uh, just to summarize these changes the team charter is more like a formal document and a social contract right uh, it it exists uh, uh, you know as a, uh, to outline the team's purpose the goals and the roles and responsibilities ground ground rules on the other hand are uh, the guidelines which the team is expected to follow generally speaking ground rules are drafted at the beginning of the uh, project or when the team formation is happening and it outlines things like meeting etiquettes and um, some of the other um, similar uh, behaviors which are expected from the team members working agreements quite similar to the ground rules uh, but the focus here is on uh, improving the team's efficiency and um, again uh, like uh ground rules both working agreements and ground rules are subjected to change or adjusted uh based on the teams's understanding as the project work progresses so i hope uh, you find this information useful uh do share if there is any feedback or follow up questions and comments and i thank you for your patience